All right. So I'm with Ian Harris, uh, CEO of Outcrop Silver and Gold, uh, OCG on the TSX Venture. And Ian, um, it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure to speak with you today. First of all, I want to compliment Outcrop on the quality of your graphics. Uh, it's something like for, for a guy who reads 10 news releases a day, it feels like I'm kind of a snob, you know, when it comes to the quality of the presentation. And Outcrop, I think, has got to be in my top five. So whoever is doing your graphics and writing your news releases, I, I'm sure you have some hand in it, uh, is doing a good job. You know, I take that as an um, absolutely huge compliment because the whole one of the biggest goals of this news release was trying to give it in a it put this expiration program in a sense that makes it easier to understand, right? Because when you're talking La Porfida, Tapaco, Las Brazos, you know, there's so many different targets, there's so many different names um, that it gets confusing, right? And uh, I wanted to add something that would be a reference of what we're doing. So when people see something, they have something to reference it uh, to. And we we actually spent a lot of time, especially on the first two, to to put it together and heart and and help make it um, easier to understand. So thanks for the feedback. We'll keep yeah, it it's it's re it's really it's really good. I I love the maps. Um, it is it is much easier to understand. It makes so much of a difference because if the maps are in high quality and you got so many target areas, and it's so busy, then people just get lost in it, and there's no information that's transmitted. But this conveys a lot of information. So why don't you just walk us through? I mean, obviously, this is a you know regional summary of all the work that outcrop has been doing and, and sort of the target areas that you're planning to go to target areas you're testing now so just walk us through some of your highest priority target areas if i can i'm just going to share parts of that same re release and uh walk through it let me know when you see it right i can see it um perfect so i really like this map maybe i'll zoom out just a little bit because this is the this is this is the setting, right? Um, and the reason why the regional approach is so important, if you look up in the top right hand corner, you see a bunch of green lines and orange lines. Orange lines are veins or ore shoots that have been completely drilled out. Where the green ones, they're in the current resource, but probably have some expansion potential. Not down dip. Everything's open down, you know, down dip, but a long strike, right? So there's still some expansion potential on 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 those and there's more squiggly lines up there because that's where the majority of the work has been done historically at at outcrop and we went into this year saying man if we want to make a big step up in our total resource size we have to get down into the trend right and that means well there's less lines down below because less work has been done okay um and if we just to get to your specific question on targets, if you see a little bullseye, you can see there's been enough work done on that vein that we say it's now drill worthy, right? Uh, reminding us of some Seinfeld episodes right now, but it's now drill worthy. Um, and so those are our key areas. We say these are our favorite targets. And, and even interesting, actually, Mangos is actually one of the ones that's furthest behind, but it's still got included in one of our top targets. So it's a, it's a mix of the level of confidence and also the quality of the quality of the target. But if I go back up and you see this nice little list that we tried to put together, right? You see all these ounces up at the top, right? You see some targets, but we have to fill that whole line, right? But the nice thing is it's pretty clear to see that if this is 37 million ounces, right? We have a potential easily to double, maybe triple, uh, the, the, the resource, um, just through the work that we're currently doing. I think it could be much, much bigger, but I think in an internal goal, that is kind of our, our gut. We would like to get about 2.5 times bigger to put it in, you know, the, the tier one, right. For me, tier one, uh, is, is the higher grade. It's got the recoveries. It's got all these other things going forward. It's a primary silver play. Um, but, uh, you know, getting over that 100 million ounce threshold, I think is a critical threshold and it's an internal goal of us and how to get there. So this really helps put it together, all this work. It's not just drilling, 
it's not about this year is not about resource drilling. This year is about proving out those individual targets, having an inventory of proven veins, still new ones to test. Right. So we have optionality on where we're going to drill out the resources, because the other thing that we do is I know how much we're worth per per ounce in the ground. Right. I know how much each ounce is worth in terms of our valuation. And I want to add ounces to the book at a way lower price uh, than our current valuation so that I know moving forward. Right. That that every every capital raise is adding value uh, to to the to to the shareholders. Um, and so that was the that's the that was the overall. There's obviously a ton of work to convert. You know, we start by regional mapping um, b- based on some geophysics to help us t- with targeting. Uh, there's geochemistry at surface. There's a lots of uh, uh, sampling that goes on. And then as it gets better, then we say, no, what we either do a channel sampling if we have access to an old an old added or a small miner who who thought it was a gold mine. Uh, they're great prospectors, by the way, uh, until they find out that that's silver and then they they walk away. Um, but or doing trenching, which is obviously more more intensive and requires better relations with with the community. So we kind of that's kind of the last step that we do to to advance something to target. So we see the grades uh, obviously at surface. It gives us an, an indication of how it could look below service, but it's not proven until until you actually drill. Okay, so you've been working your way south from the you know, resource area from the 2023 uh, maiden uh, resource estimate. You've been working your way south. Tell us about the, dr- the drill um, targets that you've been testing so far in 2024. And then also tell us about uh, La Ye. So this is very high-grade chip samples, very high-grade uh, soil samples uh it looks like a fantastic target are you going to drill that next okay so i'm going to take a step back right and say one of the things i am most proud of is that we can even do what we're doing today right all of our work in the past was up in the northeast and now we're taking very large steps downwards i mean uh um um aguilar was seven kilometers away from the known resource area, right? And infrastructurally, you know, there's water lines, there's access on the roads, getting on a lot of people's different properties. Just to go from Aguilar down to Los Mangos required agreements with 13 different families or individuals uh, to access their property, right? And to be able to get that done, and, and I, I will share, right? We are now working on the mobilization down to, and the infrastructure to get to Los Mangos all the way down to the Southern part, right? There's a lot of work, right? Uh, and that there, we built a relationship um, and also have demonstrated how we work um, has created the relationships that has made that happen, right? Uh, nobody, it's it's pretty simple. If you somebody somebody came up with a backhoe to your backyard and say, "Hey, I want to big dig, dig, dig a big trench through it," what would you say? You you might meet them with a shotgun, right? So it's not different here, and I and it always blows me away when people say we tried to go uh, and and they ran us off. I was like, "Well, did you ask them permission?" Like, I mean, it's just common. But we have the right. I mean, come on, right? Sometimes <laughs> the arrogance gets ahead of you, right? And <laughs> and so that we're actually able to execute this work for me. Uh, the what happens behind the scenes, the the relationships. This year, Fallen, the the township closest to to our project put their letters, you know, the, it's in the center of town, town square, they put up their letters, F-A-L-A-N, right, you know, it's co- very common, every little town wants them, so people take their Instagram photo and post the, the name of the town, it's a source of pride, and each one of the letters represented something, and L was legacy, and it was the legacy of silver and the future and potential of silver, and there's Ooh. literally a geologist looking on core, and there's a solar panel on the L, and for me, that speaks volumes, Right. Because it says it's a source of pride now for that community. They believe it. They're part of it. They feel part of the project. Um, They're not ashamed of it, you know, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So that was a big part. So La Ye uh, actually was we are actually moving towards that target now because we did have to get some agreements into place and, you know, just things work out. Um, One of the last ones also provided the access to the water line that we needed to get to the drill. Um, so we are very excited about moving uh, and being able to get onto Laye uh, very soon, right? So uh, 
The biggest target and the one we wanted to start on was Aguilar. Um, not because it's the most spectacular grades, but it has a very long strike length. So we know that it, as a minimum, it could add significant amount of ounces, even if it ends up not being something we drill out because we have so many better things to do. But I think it's going to contribute um, a lot to the future resource resource drilling. Okay, so how many uh, holes are currently pending assets? Oh, I think... I think we might have just got them in though. Um, I think we have about five holes. It's not as many because we literally did two drill moves. We moved off of Aguilar and uh, we moved off of uh, Guadal. So we've actually done two drill moves. So it's got just a week of a little bit slower. Um, but I still think, you know, our goal is to to put out some additional news uh, next week, right? I mean, it could be a couple weeks, but we do have more news to put out. The last press release before yesterday's uh was an update on all the drilling that had been done on aguilar uh and then we have another release on the, some of these newer targets okay so probably get some news next week for the beaver creek conference you think that's the idea yeah that's the idea and and i, and I want to help people interpret because i see some of the comments right so when you see 30 centimeters and a thousand grams you know there's a lot of people with naysayers right for us that's huge. And I'll explain why, right? Because you, you got stuff at surface, right? You do a drill hole and you hit the mineralization. That is what is most important to us because mm -hmm. these um, vein systems, what we're really looking for is an ore shoot, right? But at least we have a starting point, right? And then you end up and you look for where you have a more significant uh, or shoot. And, and Aguilar is a great example, right? We went from 30 centimeters at 900 or something like that. And then there were six meters. And then we've had a lot of consistent about a, out about a meter uh, and width, right? It's a part of the hunt, right? You know, it's, uh, and, and so uh, I want people to understand that, that this is, this is quite complicated, right? You see something at surface, then you have to figure out how it looks underground. And then you also have a different plunge um to the actual ore shoots right so it's it's a it's solving a puzzle right but and that's what we're really looking for when we know we're in an ore shoot and we got a little bit of it then we know we're done and we can move on to the next but we know it's now ready to drill out for future resources so when you're selecting a new target area obviously there's there's soil sampling there's trenching there's mapping there's probably a few other things involved with getting it ready to be drilled. And then when you drill a new target area, so uh, an area of the project that's never been drill tested, um, put the first drill in it, what's the criteria that you have to say, we're gonna continue to test this target. We're gonna put more holes in here. Well, we always want to put a few holes in, right? Like we don't wanna just base all our decisions on one, right? But to continue the hunt, right, is really great near or above our uh, current resource, right? Um, so when we see grades above 500, you know, um, and even if sniff is, sniffs at 200 or even 100, we know that we're in silver and we know that we can perhaps find um, where more mineralization is, is coming from. Right. And, and you have to coordinate. We see stuff at surface. So we see stuff at underground and it's really like a little bit of a treasure hunt. Right. You know, uh, the old uh, I hate to use that. What was that? Mine, mine, mine hunter game that you had on on, on Windows 95. Right. You're, you're checking. <laughs> oh, boxes you're dating you're yourself. You're dating. Yeah, I yourself. am. <laughs> I know. I know. Yeah. I just had a big birthday recently, but I'll hide it. Um that you're really hunting for something that you think uh, could uh, come together. And sometimes, sometimes um, we get it where these veins might have very high grade, right? But you have blowouts of high grade and then you have very low grade that make it not worth hunting, right? Because if you know your success rate is only going to be 30%, we put it right into our calculator. Average grade, success rate, uh, average width, how many, how many ounces you add per, per hole. And if it doesn't make sense because you have to miss so much, right, um, then we're not going to do it, right? I mean, again, we literally have a calculator that says how many, how much will it cost to add ounces on each one of these and what's our probability of success? Um, we're about 60% uh, on our, on our, we're very proud of that, right? It's used to be about 30% here 
Uh, so we're very proud of our, 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 our success rate. Um, but it, it's real. Like you, you know, sometimes you just completely miss the vein. There's this fault or it folds or, and then on top of it, you have to find the plunge of the, of the, of the ore shoots. Uh, so it's, um, it's why I love working with great geologists, right? Cause they, I, my brain can't figure that out. They can't. Right? <laughs> yeah. And the, the, the way you make it sound, it's, it's very challenging. This is not easy at all, but the prize is kilo plus grade silver. That's right. Um, or, I mean, I mean, that's the, the hope is that it's, or, uh, you know, that it will be economic. It will be, it will be mined one day and it will be processed into gold and silver bars. Um, that's I'm gonna, why I can tell you, because <laughs> now I'm going to lean on the mining engineer side of me, right? Okay. In Colombia, at these grades, at these kind of recoveries, there's no doubt in my mind that there's not an economic project. I mean, I'll put, I, I can say with the highest level of confidence, because I have personally worked at projects with lower grades, 30 centimeters, and they were economic projects, right? Um, and, and gold, to be fair, but I'm talking on a gold equivalency basis. Uh, it is, ex grade is king. Um, this project at, I love to say it, it's decoupled from scale. And it's one of the highest undeveloped projects uh, in the world, right? I mean, and that helps, that helps with what we do, right? So the geology, getting to those resources, we're very confident that they're there. We're going through a very scientific process for getting them up there. Yes, it's complex, but we can we know how to do it uh, because we know it's worth it, right? Uh, I don't want to work on projects that cannot become future mines, and I know that this has the runway to become a future mine. Okay, uh, and with you know with Laie, let me just just pick your brain a little bit there. So you know you said you don't like to just put one hole in. You definitely want to test it with with a few holes at least to to give it a real shot. Uh, how long do you think you'll spend at, at Law Yay? How many holes to, to really properly uh, test that target? And obviously, if you if you get some joy, uh, do you then expand the you know the program there? Yeah, that is very true. I know that LA will put in at least three holes. Probably La like, La like, is worth even putting six in, right? Because we're seeing, um, especially in channel samples, over two thousand grams. So you know there's something there, right? Mm -hmm. um, there's a tendency that these continue at at all elevations. So it's not like a, a like a boiling point or something. You have a, definitely a continuation of grade. Sometimes the ratio of gold and silver changes, but you have we don't normally see that you get to a certain elevation and then it and these things die. So seeing it at surface. It means that it's it's there, right? But again, you have to figure out what is the the strike and dip of the vein, and then what is the 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 plunge of the the ore shoot. So, you know, well, even if you're in one, it's at least worth one more drill move to to keep to keep testing it. So, I would say at Laie, we're at least going to put in uh, six holes. But to be fair, I am only influential on that decision. I let the decision be left to you know the VPX who really knows uh, knows his stuff and is balancing those things on a day to day basis. Um, but I, I know that Lee Yeo would be something that we put at least six holes into, and based on our success rate, you know we might get four good holes out of it, right? Uh, and then if we get four good holes, then we'll probably spend a little bit more time on that. Unless, but we really have to get to as many targets as possible this this year. So. Even if we're getting great hits, we need to move on because we need to figure out where are the additional resources uh, coming from, right? So um, it's a big year for us. It's a big year because it's setting up next year, right? Uh, and next year is about resource drilling. Okay, I got two more questions for you, Ian, and I'll let you go. Uh, first one is, how challenging is it being CEO of, of two different companies? Uh, you know, is your is your bandwidth stretch do you find that it takes away from one of them uh you know how do you manage it well i would like to start that right now i am sitting in my office in medellin this is where i live this is where i work right and i just moved because i can walk to work right so making more time i'm I, I love working and i love working with the the team that i have and both the staff are in this office right uh and that and i speak spanish Right. So which adds a whole layer of efficiency. Right. So um, I like to think that is the way that I'm capable of managing it because I speak the language. I'm highly involved. 
and I'm bumping in and seeing these people on, on a daily basis. I'm not making a flight down once a month or once or two months or once every three months. I'm here every single, every, every single day. Uh, and, and I've obviously been working, you know, by 25 years, 15 of those years working in South America on how to make very efficient teams um, is, is important, right? Because there's a, there's a, a huge cost benefit right? You can have a much more significant staff. One of the reasons you love those drawings is because I have a full-time graphics artist in, in, on staff that works on both projects. Um, um, because, but I wouldn't be able to do that if I was living in, in Canada. It would cost way too much. Uh, and, and that allows it and that makes it happen, right? There's, and, there's, there's, and it also creates advantages, right? It, it's about a you know, big part, and I say this to a lot of people, the technical part is easy, right? uh on a project right um you know you can solve problems but what's really 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 important is what i say is that local strength national reputation and it drives political will that's what keeps projects moving forward that's what converts projects to minds and so there's obviously a, an advantage uh, uh a huge advantage uh managing both projects uh from a single office and 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 having the advantages of lessons learned, what works, what doesn't work, and obviously the relationships on a national level. Final question. As a, as a CEO of a silver-focused junior explorer, on a scale of one to 10, how, how excited are you for the silver market right now and the prospects, uh, the future prospects you know, for the silver price? So I will start off, and, and and you know it was hard for me in the beginning when I see people writing about silver and I'm talking about it in the past and what people's opinions are, and I'm like that makes no sense with it. And I had to understand that each person has their. Some people are day traders, right? Some people mm -hmm. are looking a week in advance, right? And so as a mining engineer, I'm a little bit more long term, right? And so the fundamentals of silver are undeniable. They're undeniable, right? It and it's and it's a simple equation, right? 60% uh, growth in solar power last year. Why? Because it's easier to put solar projects into, into production than anything else. Energy demand is through the roof. If you're a naysayer to the energy transition, it doesn't even matter because it's still easier to put in a solar project than any other. It's why 50% of all power projects last year in the United States were solar because it's quicker, right? Why did gas plants take over coal plants? Because it was quicker, right? And now you have an AI demand, right? And the AI demand is also coming in. So from a power perspective, right, you're going to need more silver. It's and, and, and it's already in a massive deficit and it won't stop, right? So, okay, maybe people are going to be melting down their silverware and selling their silver, but it's going to run out. Like it's, it's, it's inevitable. I cannot tell you if it's in three months, you know, if it's in a year, when does that people get it and they start hoarding? When is that going to happen? But I know it's going to happen. Right. And then I see things like the new Samson battery coming out. Right. And it's now silver based. And it's not like, well, that's a cool technology. Some university, they've already gotten an agreement with uh, Lexus from to part putting it in their electric vehicles like it's happening. Right. And so I see all this demand. It's because why? Because it's the most efficient transmitter of electricity on the planet. There is nothing better, right? There's nothing more efficient. And so when you need the best, you're going to use silver, right? So it's not, and, and it's, they already pay for silver, right? So it's not like, oh no, it's too expensive. They're already paying for it. So you know that they're quite insensitive to, to pricing. And so there's, and I, wow, if I had to add another layer, only 30% mm -hmm. of silver comes from silver mines, right? So I can tell you that no copper project is going to make a decision to turn on or off based on silver price. Right, because it's insignificant to their bottom line, right? Uh, and copper mines produce thirty percent of all silver on the planet, right? So it's very they're very agnostic to silver price. So there's all these chemical, you know, all these bits and pieces, right? And and it's new bit, right? Because the industrial demand was always a part of silver. We always talked about it, right? But it was never a real driver. And now it is a real driver. It's a big part of it, right? Solar panels alone is 20% of all demand. So when it grows by 60%, you know, that's a massive impact, right? We know in the mining industry, you can only grow two to 3% at best per year, right? Supply. And silver, it's even harder. 
right? So when you see increases of, you know, 10, 20%, it is, it's a runaway train. So it's only a matter of time before it hits a wall. So that's why I'm a believer. We have a long-term perspective. We know where we sit and, you know, we're looking at windows uh, here that we know the, the backdrop. So honestly, I'm extremely excited about uh, the potential of silver, where our project is. And eventually, you know, it's like when you're surfing and you're pushing forward and you know that wave and you know you're going to get the wave. You know you're going to hit that wave. Uh, and, and it's definitely coming. Uh, I'm going to just leave off by saying that on the weekly silver chart, the way I see it, uh, and so we're taking a little longer term here, the weekly chart. So I'm, I'm not talking about tomorrow or next week, but let's say maybe a couple months from now. The, the next breakout of $30 an ounce, I think that'll be a very powerful one. And it will be one that does not quickly get, you know, retraced. I think we'll go from 30 to 35 pretty quickly. And then and then we'll we'll test out your your theory about the supply. At, at 35, will a lot of new supply come online? And if you're right, that it's not. It's not really there. It's not really able to turn on. And, and the difference between 28 and 35 doesn't matter for, for most of those mines. Then there won't be a supply response. Um, and, I think there and, will be a slight, don't get me wrong. There will be a supply response because there's a lot of mines out there that have a all in sustaining cost of about $30 an ounce, 25 25 to 30 dollars an ounce but they're already operating so maybe they push the gas a little bit harder but we're dealing with such big numbers right you know i it's like uh, i'm trying to fi figure out an analogy you know it's like an, an ant trying to stop a, a bicycle right it's <laughs> it's it's the numbers blow my mind away right the the de the cumulative deficit by the end of the year is anticipated to be a entire year of production it's not a 10% deficit. It's, not, yes. it's a whole year of production, right? So it is massive, the deficit. And so at 35, I think the biggest, the biggest catalyst to a real big move in, in, in silver is when people start seeing it as an investment and start hoarding, right? And pull that away from supply. Which so has even if started, a, started happening. It started. It's still like, it, it is happening, but it was on such, I mean, it was, you know, the it was basement. It was a it was a zombie apocalypse in the United States. So yeah, there is a big following, and there's some true believers. But it's when it really becomes. I like seeing who said it recently that they are no longer accumulating uh, cash; they're accumulating their own bullion, right? And that tells you, right, that people see and understand that it's it's undeniable. We know what's going to happen, and we just know it's a matter of time. So we're better off holding our own silver than we are holding a U.S. dollar right uh, and yeah and that's uh, that that's big when it becomes more mainstream right uh uh that's when we know thank you ian i appreciate it uh see you next week cheers see you soon looking forward to it